how this all works, how the system works. And people always ask you, how do you get out of the system? I mean, even Ron Paul was talking about opting out. So what do, what do they mean by opting out of that system or this system or that system? Well, Nimrod had a system. Pharaoh had a system. And so did Caesar have a system. And, of course, the apostles were a part of a system, too. And they said there was another king, one Jesus, who did contrary to the decrees of Caesar. And that Caesar was doing things a certain way. He was running his system with a social welfare system that exercised authority one over the other. Now, he forced the contributions of the people and provided everything from public education to, uh, you know, uh, welfare, daily welfare, food, uh, even money to anybody who had signed up. And how you signed up, signed up was, you know, you get a birth certificate when you're born, and that would show that you're eligible, or you would apply, and uh, that would show that you're eligible. And then, you know, they actually had a thing called a logos, an identity uh, thing, to prove that you were a member of that system. And uh, they operated these systems by force. And then along comes John the Baptist, who doesn't use force. Now, both systems use some sort of system of receiving contributions from the people and then redistributing those contributions of the people when they have a real need for assistance, social welfare assistance. And we've always had that in this country. We've always had it in just about every country. But it used to be in private hands because the people were private. They were private individuals. And therefore, welfare was in their private hands. That's the way it operated. That's the way that... Uh, and we took care of one another to, to the church, to charity. But now we change that. Most people are taken care of by the governmental systems, which, which also receive contributions. I mean, everybody knows that every year you have to contribute, you know, to your government, whether it's, you know, in Washington, D.C. or Ontario, Canada or wherever, you know, London, whatever. You contribute to your government. They put the money in the treasury, supposedly, and then they take care of the social welfare of the people. And uh, that's, that's how they operate. That's the way the system functions, through those contributions. And then, it used to be through contributions, you would go and give them to church, but now your church is by speaks. You know, it's all about making you feel good. You know, and comfortable, entertaining you, you know, for an hour or so, and then it, it helps you feel righteous because it says, oh, you know, well, you're, you're a part of the church. You know, you come to the church. You know, you have a religion. And our religion is, we think this about God. And this religion over here, they think this about God. And they may be almost identical, but this one has a better band, so I'm going over to that one. Or I like the people over in this one better. The, the pews are softer. Or, you know, they have actually cushioned seats, you know. And and, uh, and besides, I got mad at the guy over here in this other one, you know. But it doesn't have anything to do with taking care of the widows and orphans and needy of your society. Well, they might do a little of that, but it, that, that's, that's not really what you go to church for. You go to church, you know, to feel like you're good and righteous. And you remember this? You know, some people don't do that anymore, and they, you know, they just say, I don't get anything out of church. I'm not going. I mean, well, you get out of going to church. You see, the early Christians, they didn't go to church because they got something out of it. They went to church because they actually cared about their neighbor as much as they cared about themselves. And they could not get the welfare of men like Herod uh, the Great or welfare like Augustus Caesar or Tiberius Caesar or Caligula or Claudius or any of those guys. They, they couldn't get those welfares because they weren't signed up for them. They had another king, one Jesus, and he showed them, along with John the Baptist, how to take care of the needy of their society through faith, hope, and charity because they knew that if you sit and eat with a ruler who exercises authority one over the other, uh, that he serves you deceitful meats and what he offers you for welfare will become a snare. Most of you probably didn't know that. But you still want out of the system. Well, you can't get out of the system. You know, there's over, uh, let's say last, I think it was last year, there was like 3,000 Americans gave up their citizenship. That's not very many out of, you know, 360 million Americans. But they actually gave it up. One person said that when they gave up their passport, afterwards they were so sickened by having to do it that they went outside and threw up in the street. But they had to because, they, you know, unlike almost any other country, that if you earn money abroad and you live abroad, you still have to pay all the same taxes on it because, you know, they, they, they're desperate for money because... All those benefits you get, they don't come out of your income tax. That is for paying the interest. They come out of the money they borrow, out of debt. And, of course, that's the design because, see, that makes you a surety for debt. You can't just leave the system. So you can't even, you can't even expatriate if you've got too much money. They, they will follow you for 10 years if it, because of the fact that uh, they, 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 you're, you're entangled in the elements of the world, being the constitutional order and systems of government. Now, people don't want to hear this, you know, and I'm one of these voices of one crying in the wilderness that really makes it difficult for people to uh, 
listen to because they want to hear a message like, you know, all we have to do is file these papers or they want to hear the a message, oh, you're already saved. You don't have to do anything. And, of course, you know, this is why Christ, even with raising the dead, couldn't get much of a crowd. You know, ends, ends up with 12 apostles and only 120 in the upper room. And, and even though there were thousands of Jews who became followers of Christ and started living by faith, hope, and charity at Pentecost and the day after, you know, thousands and thousands, it really still was a minority. It, it was a large block in Judea, but in, in all the Roman Empire, it was only about 5%. And that's about what you get in the United States today, is about 5% uh, of the people who actually wanted to be real Christians. I mean, that, that, that's just all they're going to do. They're not going to seek anymore. <laughs> that's just, that's it. You know, uh, in fact, most Christians would want to kill Christ if they had a chance. That's what they would want to do. They would want to kill Christ if they had a chance. Because, I mean, they, they wouldn't tell you that. They'd say, oh, we love Jesus. Just like, you know, the Pharisees said they loved Moses. But they don't really love Jesus. They don't really care about Jesus. They, ha they care about the image of Jesus that they have created in their own mind. But the real Jesus, who told you not to covet, they don't love him. They, 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 they told you not to apply to any, the fathers of the earth, knowing full well that the fathers of the earth was the Roman government and any kind of government that has men who exercise authority and make laws. I mean, all the senators were called father, and the emperor was called Patronus, our father. And at that time in Judea, you know, a lot of people think, uh, you see the movies and you think all the Jews hated the Romans. Not so. They mourned the death of uh, Augustus Caesar weeping and wailing in the streets when Augustus Caesar died. Why? Because he was the benefactor of Judea. His welfare system was the most expensive welfare system throughout the Roman Empire. And it was called Corbin, and Herod set up a similar system. And if you were to talk about it in Aramaic, you, you would use the word Corbin also, but you could also use the word mailman, which had to do with the funds that were in your Corbin treasury. And what was your Corbin treasury? That, that was your social security fund in your society. That's just a matter of history. I mean, I'm not making it up. You can look it up, and we write about it. we got several books on the subject. But if you're not going to uh, want to learn, if you want to think you already know how it all works, then, you know, what can I tell you? That you don't think you already know. Uh, you can uh, just go to the network links and join the network in your area, and there will be people that try to teach you and share with you and show you how this all works, how the system works.